Hey guys, welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. What I have here beside me is my latest uh, Facebook Marketplace find. This is a, a 16 gallon stainless steel wet dry shop vac. And I found this on Facebook Marketplace. Um, the guy was asking like 80 bucks for it, but uh, we negotiated a price down to 50. And uh, I told him I would take it for that. I believe what this came from is uh, one of those uh, scratch and dent pallets. Uh, and you can see the box is pretty raggedy, but the unit inside is brand new. It's never been used. Um, I did plug it in and we tested it and it works. So what I need to do is find out what was wrong with it. Uh, the reason it was returned or pulled off the floor not to be sold and uh, see if it was worth the money I paid. So let's take a look. Now looking at the box, I did see on, there's a slip attached to the box here that says it is uh, faulty merchandise. It's got a date of 9-16-22 on it, so it's fairly new. Uh, description is the uh, 6.5 horsepower 16-gallon uh, shop vac problem it says it's cracked so um, let's take a look and uh, see where it's cracked uh, obviously the box is pretty well beat up but I believe everything inside from what I looked at before it looks brand new uh, everything's still in the wrapper so let's pull it out of the box and uh, see exactly what we have Let me see if I can get it out of the box here. Uh, what is this? This looks like some sort of handle. Uh, let's see. Looks like R2-D2. I guess this is the original bag. We got some kind of uh, tool holder or something here with it. It looks like some uh, extensions of some sort and uh, some sort of rod here. And that's all that's in the box. So we'll see what else uh, is out here. It looks like we may be missing some wheels. Um, let me see what's in the inside here. How does this open? Maybe I, maybe I should read the instructions. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see what's broken here. All right, right here, the handle is broken. Actually, it's not the handle. It's got a crack right here too, so I don't know. It looks like maybe it got hit here or something happened. But uh, there we go. It looks nice, the filter is brand new it's not been used oh and uh let me show you the inside here it's got all of the goodies on the inside so let's go ahead and pull those out and see what we have so it looks like we have the uh manual that's nice we have the hose Ah, look at here, we have some wheels. I bet that's what this is. This is probably the axle. Look at that for the wheels. All right, two wheels. Uh, we do have the coasters, casters. That's nice. Oh, these are nice rubber casters. That's good. Looks like we have a large wand of some sort. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, we have our other caster. That's encouraging. We've got both casters. Let's see what this attachment is. Oh, it's a brush attachment. We have a uh, crevice attachment. We have a something something attachment. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's to uh, suck water up and uh, has a little screen, but I'll look in the instructions to see. Comes with a bag. 
I assume that's for dry. You wouldn't want that for wet. A couple other pieces here. Not quite sure what all that is. Uh, another little group of pieces. And then we get some extra plastic bits. I don't know if these are what's broken off or not. But uh, hey, it looks pretty good. So let's see if we can uh, assemble it. And then we'll uh, see if we can find out what's going on with that broken piece. So let me look at the instructions. So the first thing it says to do is invert the, uh, the tank, the dust tank, and assemble the wheels and casters. So let's do that. Let's flip it over. Okay, yeah, look, it still has the uh, blue protective film on the bottom. And then uh, I believe the way this works is you just slide this axle through. And then we got the wheels that go on. Not too difficult. And then we should have some cotter pins or something. Let's see what's in this little bag here uh, to hold those wheels on. Oh yeah, here's the, uh, these are the caps, like the hub caps. Uh, let's see. And let's see what else we need. Let me reference the instruction manual here. So slide the rear axle and install the pin and washer. Well, I don't see a pin and washer. However, I have some cotter pins. Oh, I do see the pin. Okay, it's in there. It's just, it's just small. Okay, and pull all this out. So we have two cotter pins. There's one. And two, and it says a washer. So I'm assuming these big washers, yeah, there we go. It's only two of these big washers and they fit onto the axle. So uh, even though they don't really clearly say which washer to use, it's pretty obvious. And then we'll put our carter pin in. And then I'll bend that back. I need to get a pair of pliers to bend that back. Let me get you up closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So here we are a little closer on this wheel. So what I did previously was slid the wheel onto the axle and then slid the, bear, the bushing or the washer on and then insert the cotter pin in. And then we just need to bend this over so that we lock it in place. I might have to get another uh, another pair of pliers to hold that. There we go. That's good enough. It's uh, not like it's gonna really go anywhere. And then let me retrieve one of the little hubcaps that go on. And then we'll pop that on. You just line up the three prongs with the three holes there in the wheel. And there you go. Let's do the other side now. So here we are on the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. Just put the cotter pin in, and then see if I can bend this around. A little bit. There we go. Bend the other end down. And that's good enough. And then put our little hubcap on. So we have the two rear wheels on. Let's uh, install the front casters.
Now the next thing we want to do is uh, insert the casters in the front and these have a little little section here it's uh, like a triangle so there's only one way for it to go in you slide it in there and then it has on the back side let me move you around to the side here it's on the back side here a little piece for a uh, screw so uh, there's two, four, six screws in this bag. They don't really say what they're used for, but they all look the same. So I'm going to make another big assumption here and just assume that screw goes there. And I'm going to use my DeWalt driver and screw that in. So there we go. That's one, let's do the next one. Now we're ready for the next one. Then we'll slide that in. Only one way that it goes. Put our screw in. And there we go. Caster number two. The next step on the list is to install the accessory holder bag. And let's see, it looks like it has uh, some self-tapping screws with some washers there too. So let's see what we got. This is our accessory holder bag. And it is supposed to go right here. And then there's um, two screws on each side so let's see there are uh, some screws here and there are four rubber uh, washers and four normal washers so my guess would be that the rubber washers would go between the accessory bag and the, the drum so it wouldn't uh, rattle, but I'm not really sure. Let's see what the instructions say. After referencing the instructions, it really doesn't say how that goes on, but it does show an image of two washers for each screw. So uh, maybe that means you would again put the uh, the rubber washer first so that it's up against the the metal and will not um, rattle or vibrate and then the uh, hard washer second that's going to be my assumption it really doesn't show a close-up of it or gives you any real detailed instructions on which of these washers go where but uh, we're just going to take a guess and do what we think is logical. And I think it's logical for that washer to be up against the, uh, the drum. Okay, so I've got my four screws kind of staged there. And then I'm going to have to hold the inside. Now, I am seeing two that I get further into it. There is some dents in the canister. There's a dent here and there's a dent over here in the canister. Um, so again, not sure how that happened, um, but uh, maybe it was in shipping, maybe something else. But for me, I'm not worried about dents as long as the thing works right. That's all I care about. So let's put our um, tool accessory bag on. Hold that here. Let me see if I can get a couple of screws started. Kind of hard to see. Whoop. Tangled up in my mic cord there. Okay, there's one started. 
start one on this other side. Okay. Get the other one going here. Again, it's kind of hard to see the holes behind there. That's why I'm going easy. Hopefully that uh, it's gonna go straight in. That one is not wanting to go, so let me take a look. But I'll bring you in closer so you can see what the goal is. So these screws I've got started without a problem uh, over here on the other side. Maybe if I screw this one in a little bit more, it'll line it up a bit. Let's see. Yeah, that one is not wanting to line up. So let me see. Let me get my uh, pick and see if I can understand why that's not lining up. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can, if I can get it started again. Oh, I believe I got it that time. I just had to twist the uh, the bottom of the uh, tool holder just a tad to get the screw to go in. So let's go ahead and tighten these up. That's good. Now it says to snap this piece in. So let me remove the plastic. It's got a couple of uh, little snap-in dealies there. So we push those in, slide them down. And they said you should hear it click into place. There we go. Okay. That is snapped in now. Well, that's really all there is to it. There's no more assembly to be done. Um, so let's take a closer look at the top of this thing where it's cracked and see what we think we need to do to repair that. Uh, let's see. So it goes on like that. Um, in the crack, let me move you around. So here we are looking at the front of the unit and where it is cracked is right here. Uh, and you can see here that the handle is cracked. Let me zoom up just a bit right here and if you look down in there underneath uh, i believe the way this thing is constructed is it had a uh, like a gusset or a boss that stuck down on the bottom of this handle and it looks like there was a screw screwed up from the underneath so um in this crack here so there's a couple of things i can do um I have some JB Weld for plastic. I could just 
like JB weld this, just gob a bunch up under there and uh, call it done. Or I could try to uh, take the unit apart. Let me back out a bit. And uh, let's see. So it looks like if you look at the bottom of it, there are screws all around here. So I could probably take all of these screws out and uh, pull this unit out and uh, then get to the underneath where those screws are because I'm sure the only thing is up in here is the motor. Um, so uh, let me know in the comments what you think I should do, whether just glue it and be done or would you want to see me take the thing totally apart and um, try to fix it from underneath but let's go ahead for the time being plug it in and see if it sucks so it has a very long cord which is nice you see i've taken it all the way over and plugged it in the wall the thing that i was a bit surprised about is that it's not a grounded plug and like a three-prong plug, it's only a two-prong, and I would expect a wet dry vac to be well grounded and have a three-prong ground plug, but maybe it's not needed. So uh, let's see what it happens here. All right. Well, that works really good. So, uh, don't see anything wrong with that. What is this little doodad here? Maybe that's to hold the cord or something, but it's a little stretchy elastic thing there. All right, so like I said, now the, uh, the only thing left to do is to decide whether, you know, how to fix this crack here in the top and the handle. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Just uh, slap the old JB weld on it and be done. Uh, or whether you'd like to see me take that upper unit apart to get to the underneath of the handle and fix it a little more robustly, I guess I could say. Um, okay, thanks for watching. I'm going to load up the old uh, tool caddy here and uh, then that'll be it.